Welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. Happy New Year. Welcome back to the shop. We are returning to work on guitars number 86 and 87 here. And today we are doing a seemingly trivial task here, but actually a very important job, which is cutting out bridge plates. First of all, let me talk about the purpose of the bridge plate and then I'll go into material selection for bridge plates and then we'll actually uh, make a template and cut out two bridge plates for number 86 and number 87. So the bridge plate as you can see goes right here between our and connecting our lower X brace arms and of course the bridge plate not surprisingly is directly behind the bridge itself. The main function of the bridge plate is simply to be a hard bearing surface for the ball ends of the strings because the bridge pin holes are going to come through somewhere near the middle of this plate. And if we used any material other than a nice dense hardwood, if we used spruce or cedar like we are for the rest of the bracing pattern, then the bridge plate wouldn't be doing its job because the ball ends of the strings would just eat right through that softwood. So the main function of the bridge plate is to be a replacement for the softwood, a nice piece of hardwood for the ball ends of the strings, again, to bear against, okay? And a secondary function of the bridge plate is for it to be a little bit larger than the bridge itself so that it helps distribute out the pressure that the strings, the torque from the strings pulling on the bridge on this side, it's going to help give that torque a little bit of a wider footprint so you don't end up with a belly in the front, I'm sorry, a belly in the back of the behind the bridge or a sunken concavity in front of the bridge. So it's distributing the forces. But main thing, hard, wearing, hard bearing surface. Most people use maple, and that's what I'm using here. These are all little maple blanks here that I bought from Stu Mac. You can make your own bridge plates, of course, but I like buying them from a supplier simply because they will sell them as skew cut maple. So what they, I mean by skew cut is if you look at this from the side, and let me get a pencil so I can draw this out. The grain lines are not standing up like this. Rather, that would be quarter sawn, right? The grain lines are going at an angle like that. Kind of like a 45. And what that means is if we imagine the ball end of the string sitting right here on the surface. If we're sitting on or between a grain line, that grain line is longer because it's going at an angle than if it was straight up and down, it would be very inclined to crack the bridge plate when it's straight up and down like that. But that longer grain line not only has extra length, so it's harder for it to split, but also it's very, um, very likely to be overlapping another grain line, right? So again, if the ball end of the string's right here, it's actually sitting on not just this grain line, but also this one right here, and possibly more grain lines if there's other ones between there. So that way you're sitting, you're not on one point of weakness, uh, because a big problem with a lot of older guitars that people have found over the decades is split bridge plates. It's a very common repair, actually. And so in more recent times, people have, luthiers and builders have turned to uh, a different orientation of their material, specifically for the bridge plate. Okay? And so, again, this is the reason why I like to buy these from a supplier, because I have cut these out for myself before when I've had chunks of maple here. And to get that orientation that I want on a given billet of maple out, 
I might only be able to get one or two of these out of it before I end up with material that's either flat sawn or straight quarter sawn. So what, these are pretty inexpensive. I forget what they are, but they're not pricey at all uh, to buy these blanks from a supplier and it just saves you time and uh, the waste of you know the extra material that you'll have if you cut these out yourself. Skew cut maple. That's the way to go. Uh, alternatively though, you can use any hardwood will do at least a, a decent job of resisting the ball ends of the strings. Of course, mahogany uh, will, would be the worst because mahogany is a very soft hardwood. It's almost like a softwood. But if I often encourage people, especially if you're trying to save money, uh, if you're cutting out your back plate, say, let's imagine that this was your back plate and it was rosewood or ebony or something like that. In the margins over here, so your plate is usually larger and you cut out the guitar shape, you will surely have enough room to get a bridge plate or even two bridge plates out of there. And as long as it's a good hard wood, then it should be a good bridge plate. And also, what's nice about that is uh, typically, as you travel from the center of your book match out on a uh, book matched pair, the grain is going to drift from quarter sawn towards the middle to rift sawn or, or skew cut, like we said, out near the edges. So over here on your back plate, you're probably getting a nice skew cut piece anyway. And hey, if you're not, if it's quarter sawn, um, it's it's not that it's for sure going to split. Uh, it's it's just that you know historically on very old guitars we have seen that. Just some things to keep in mind, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, what we need to do is make a template. So this, for example, is a template for a different model that I have. Uh, but it's not going to work for these parlor guitars. I have to make a new template. You can see this bridge plate is actually uh, a little bit longer. So let's first make that template and then we'll cut these out. For my template, I am using quarter inch MDF. I can use the template that I've already made for my bracing pattern to mark out the bridge plate shape. And now since this is such a large sheet of MDF, before I take it to the bandsaw, I'm gonna need to cut it down into a smaller size that's a little more workable. And I can just do that real quick with a Japanese pool saw. Take it over to the bandsaw and cut the shape a little bit closer before I then take it to the disc sander to truly bring everything down to the lines. All right, so now I've got my template. I can take this, trace out my shape onto each piece. I'm only making two, two of these right now. These will be for future guitars. Trace that out and then rough cut the shape on the bandsaw, kind of like I did for this, and then take it over to the disc sander for fine tuning on all the edges just like I did on the template as well. And that's really it. So I'm just gonna end it off right there. As I'm tracing this out, I will see you guys in the next one. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.